Welcome back to We're Live, pal. Andrew, you see what happens when we get to episode 100? Have the big episode with Brian Alvarez, and then all of a sudden, we can't get back. Like, I don't know. We're finally <laughs> back, though. Your office. How, Brian, how's your office? Uh, terrible. The studio's going terrible. Uh, <laughs> way longer than I thought it would take. Uh, these guys were not out of here. Uh, it was supposed to be like a one week thing. And I was like, ah, maybe two weeks I'll be down. No, it turned into a one month thing. I'm still not complete. The desks that we ordered are the wrong size. Nothing fits right. Like if you're looking at this, it's a little off. The lighting is off. The cameras are off. Uh, I did the best that I could today with kind of framing this, but it's a total disaster. This is good. Don't, don't judge the studio based on this. Uh, this <laughs> it's not, it's going to be. It's going to be better. The lighting is going to be better. The cameras, you know, th the previous one took me like a decade to master. You know, really? I had the same setup for almost 12 years. So you add more, you remove, you kind of figure out the lighting, how it's supposed to look. Um, it's just, I got these new LED panels now. And that plays a big part because these are not, you know, I had the big, the, the old school ones, you know, like those big uh, box ones. John, what, mm -hmm. I don't know what you call them. Not, not the umbrella ones. The, I guess the box lights. But everyone's like, go to LED, go to LED. It's so much better. Um, it's not. It's not so much better. I mean, I think it's. 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 It's actually. Uh, maybe it's me. Maybe I just don't know how to do this. I think that might be the problem. I think I got to kind of refocus and and reorganize the studio a little bit with the lighting. But probably like in another week or two, it'll be uh, exactly where I need it to be. Well, we took off either the two worst weeks or maybe the two best oh weeks God. because there was the you know the, the Vince McMahon story we haven't talked about, and I, I I I called it the Vince McMahon story, but I want to make sure that I keep on using Janelle Grant's name because it is her lawsuit, and the more yeah. you say it's just Vince, you kind of make her a little anonymous, and she is not anonymous. But we I talked so much about that with Dave the last two weeks. And then we missed the big Netflix, raw to Netflix story, which kind of is right up our alley as far as what we generally talk about. But I think we have to open with We Want Cody. This is crazy. This is a crazy story because a lot of pro wrestling fans, I would even consider smart pro wrestling fans, were kind of maneuvered in a certain direction on this one like i had a, a really good buddy he was so mad after smackdown on friday to the point of he had planned on going to wrestlemania and he canceled his plans for wrestlemania Stop because it. because of the rock what is going on here i i think i'm one of the only people uh, one of the few people that's not as upset about this about the rock taking cody's spot um Listen, I, I I still think the bigger match is Dwayne and Roman. That's the bigger match here. That's the bigger story here. I understand. I mean, listen, Cody is collateral damage here to this. I understand why they want to go in that direction. How, how could they not? It's one of the biggest movie stars against one of the biggest talents of this generation. They're related. There's the built-in storyline. I understand why they want to go there. Um you know, is it, it, it's unfortunate for Cody that it got muddied like this, but they have multiple stories that they want to tell with Roman, and that's the direction that they're headed in. It's Cody's is secondary. Now, how they inject Cody in this and what they do is going to really matter. I would rather have them just have it be Roman and, and Dwayne and not have a convoluted story for Cody. Like, this is kind of falling. And again, we don't know what the final story is. Obviously, they have a plan here. They're, they're, they're going to go in a direction. But I don't want it to be like another Brian Danielson moment where he's just injected in here and then it becomes a, a, a non-thought afterwards. Well, he actually did win the title, but then he got injured after winning the title. So that scenario, unfortunately, we never got to see how that was going to play out, though he may have. But I don't know cold. if they had a plan. I mean, I, they, he, he may, he with may Kane, have been beaten by Kane. You know? Yeah, he may have lost yeah. to Kane in that scenario. <laughs> okay, so I want to retrace our steps backwards a little bit to the Royal Rumble, because if what we are now to believe, thanks to the reporting by a lot of folks, including our own Dave Meltzer, who said that, 
before the Royal Rumble that that this was the trajectory that they wanted to go into. Why did Cody win this match? What are your thoughts on why Cody won if this is where we were ending up? I don't know. Um, well, you couldn't have Dwayne show up at number 30 and win. So that could have been one. Uh, but I, I don't know. I really, I'm, I'm really, the, the creative on how they're maneuvering this is fascinating me because uh, th there's a lot of reasons why they're going in this direction. Obviously, Co you know, Seth is hurt, but he'll be ready. Uh, CM Punk is gone, so that match is not happening. So now there's an opening for a possibility of Cody in that title. I don't know how you satisfy everybody. I think it's going to be impossible to do this. You're not going to be able to satisfy everybody here. And that's unfortunate because obviously people want to see Cody win that title. But also part of the story is Roman is one of the most dominant champions that this company has ever had. He has this tremendous record and he's continuing to break it. I think he broke every single one now. Now Hogan's is the only one. I don't think he'll make it to Hogan. I don't, I don't think that was ever the plan to beat. I mean, I know that was never the plan to beat Hogan's, but we're here now. So it could turn into, well, maybe we should. Or he drops it at WrestleMania. Or the other thing is, what if he beats Roman randomly on another show? Mm -hmm. And that's how you get out of it. Big shows coming up. I it, the it way that they're down. It could be on a Raw. You know the way that they're telling this story right now, though, where they are sort of putting Cody in that Brian Danielson role. Now Cody hasn't actually said anything on Friday SmackDown. All he said was this: the he he's not going to finish the story at WrestleMania, and then The Rock came in and they had a little whisper, and some people legitimately thought Cody was shoot cr about to cry uh, in that moment. Like yeah. this is how manipulated I think the fans feel at, at, at least now, and may maybe. You know, maybe they still don't believe that they are being manipulated. I, it's 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 a fantastic work, by the way. Now, wh where it started and how they decided to get there, I mean, from what it sounds like, almost the beginning. Uh, and a lot of things had to work out with Rock's schedule, I'm sure, as well. But, okay, so Cody hasn't said anything. Um, we Want Cody has now become PR for the company. They're having their wrestlers tweeted out. They have signs for the crowd. And they are really, really leaning into this idea that Cody Rhodes is uh, is the underdog or whatever, whatever you want to call it. Where does it where does the rock becoming a heel fit in this scenario, though? Do you think that was a misread by the creative? Or could he have not ever been? I mean, could he have even been a babyface just by taking this spot? I'm not sure he could have been. Um, that's a good question. I, I, I think portion of that audience would have turned on him at WrestleMania, regardless. Like I, I always saw the Hogan Rock switch possibly happening. That was that. I, I didn't feel like that was out of the element here, but. I mean, how can you, how can anybody cheer for you when the company is purposely telling you, no, 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 this is the wrong guy going into that match. They never do that. Like, this is something that they've never done. They've never told the audience, hey, you know that like mega star that we have and that other mega star, that's not the match you want to see. This is who the underdog is who you want there. Um, they've never done that by design. It's happened. Obviously, Danielson is the one that comes to mind and they had to kind of pivot with it, but I don't think this is a pivot. I think this is whatever they're planning. Um, you know, when I reached out to someone at WWE this morning, they said, hey, this is the magic of, of WWE. Let it play out. I think so that's what I'm Cody letting said it play too. out. Is that what he said? Uh, I think he said on Twitter something about that yesterday. A uh, very similar quote to let it play out or trust me. I think he said, trust me. The old, the old Jake, the snake line, Cody. <laughs> trust me. Trust me. <laughs> uh, th that, that is a, that is a telltale for me to absolutely not trust somebody is when they say, but tons of elements, me. tons of moving parts, right? Tons of moving yes. parts. So, I mean, one is, does, does that title need to be on Roman for the match with rock? No, not really. It doesn't. 
but I don't, I, I can't see Rock doing it without the title being involved. So that's just him as this... a celebrity or as a big star or, or thinking business. I think he probably believes at this point the title would have to be at stake because it would just make the match and stakes bigger. So would it, would the people that are upset over it, obviously, and, and I'm asking this question, I'm not, I'm, it, it's, I'm not presenting you to think, I, I really want you to know. I, I want to know what people are thinking. Would it upset people if Roman loses to Dwayne and then at, at Backlash or whatever that next pay-per-view is, Cody beats The Rock? <laughs> that would be amazing. By the way, right? Because then, then, uh, then it's like a real big win, right? You beat, you beat <laughs> one of the greatest of all time to get this title. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Uh, they, they tend to do this at WrestleMania. They book themselves into a corner. We said this last year with Roman's reign. Uh, no pun intended, or maybe a yep. little intended. Uh, yep. We, I, I think most people thought that Cody was winning it. That was the year. But now you're a year later, and we still don't have an answer. And it's even worse than before. You know, part of the problem also last year, Garrett, was that The Rock was still in play to some extent. Yes. Up until, I think, this. like January-ish. He was still in play, and the year prior to that, too, he was still in play. Not like this. You know, I, I he, he that, that was always dangled, and obviously he wants that match with Roman. He's wrestling at WrestleMania. Whether it's a three-way or whatever convoluted mess they could do, uh, I don't know. I don't want to see a three-way. I, I, I'm one of the few people that, that wants to see... Um, that, I want to see Cody win that title at WrestleMania for sure, like 100%. But if I'm talking about a business move, if I'm talking about, you know, this is a new WWE and we're shifting into different gears here, what's a bigger main event than this? There isn't. And it's unfortunately, it's not Cody. I'm not okay. talking about my personal opinion. I'm talking about as, 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 as uh, you know, as big of a WrestleMania you can make. That would be it. Yes, if Dwayne Johnson came to you and said, hey, I can do it this year, I'm not sure Triple H and Nick Khan and Ari Emanuel are saying, sorry, Dwayne, we already have the story written for Cody. They're going to figure out a way to do the yeah. match that they've kind of been half promoting for the last few years anyways. And the second that, that Dwayne did the head of the table line on Raw, I, I thought that this is where they were going. But then when you have Cody win the Rumble, then that changes it because I think people were locked into the idea that, oh, maybe maybe Rock somehow shows up at the Rumble and he didn't. So there was, um, you know, it's not it's not that they necessarily change plans. They just didn't follow up with fans in the way that fans thought they were going to follow up with. And then you had people, including Brian and Dave, saying, oh, I guess it's Cody and and Roman after all, and and we and the Rock may not be involved. So the information was uh, tightly kept and smartly so because now they're getting people going crazy about this story. Yeah. Would you? It's, it's interesting. Go ahead. No, it's interesting. I I yeah. I'm very. Uh, I've been, listen. I've been watching Raw since Punk returned. I know. I'm Live. kind of like watching Live. it like that night. Like I know I usually wait until Tuesday morning, but I'm like, you know what? I have some time. I I just want to find out what's going to happen. And that's the yeah. whole reason why they do this stuff. I did the same thing with SmackDown. Usually I watch SmackDown if I can get to it, you know, maybe on Saturday or Sunday. But uh, on Friday, I watch it Friday night. You know, just zip through it and 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 then no, no, no actually Friday I watched live. No, I did watch live because I saw the the segment live because I tweeted out. Um, you know, how can The Rock be involved? He's not even in the rankings. He couldn't, can't be you in know, this they, match. He's not in the rankings. I feel like they would have had, um, if they had, for whatever reason, decided to go with, oh, look, I could see it now, John. I could see the uh, WWF uh, Titan logo flickering. Do you guys see that? Or no? Nobody else. I do it. I could see it. You yeah, it, I could see it. Yeah. yeah. I'm having a frame mismatch. I got to figure that out, too. I, I think what would have been interesting is if they decided that Punk won. Mm -hmm. Right. If Punk mm -hmm. had won the Rumble, I think, and Cody was number two, I think it would have given a better element to this. Uh, with Punk being out, that you know, where does he go now? Does he want to challenge for that title? 
Because isn't it silly? Like, you're not going to challenge for the world title. You don't want that title. What, you're too good for it? Somebody asked me in, or not me directly, but they asked a question in the Discord about the idea of you burying a title. And I said, look, if there's two titles and the guy wins and he picks one, you're kind of burying the other one just because you're not choosing it. Like, that's going to happen anyways. So that's just kind of how they do WrestleMania and... You know, when Edge picked uh, Al- Alberto Del Rio for WrestleMania, yeah. I don't even remember what the other match was. Like, did it, 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 you know, he chose that was the important belt. So, and they've, they've been telling us that this Roman belt is the most important. So, if Punk was like, yeah, I picked Seth's belt, I think Punk looks like a goober, right? <laughs> like, for picking Seth's belt. I, I mean, we also have to remember Roman was the man that was walking around with three titles at one point. Yes. He had yes. this new one, right? He had the, and, isn't it interesting they don't on the actual title it doesn't say universal title or universal champion? What does it say? Have you noticed that? I, I hang on, let me see. WWE uh Universal Champion. Let's see. It says where is this? Let me find the new one. Undisputed champion. Oh, there you go. Isn't that something? Why is it, it why is he a universal champion? Right? Why is he the universal champion? He's the undisputed champion. He has it's one title. There's not multiple titles anymore. I don't know. That's interesting. Um, okay, so about. so kind of to put a cap on this, and we'll have much more to talk about this on future shows. It's going to be dominant, I'm sure. They have this press conference on Thursday. I really wish. Not that I wanted to go to this press conference, but it kind of feels like a, a an important deal. And here's how I explained it to myself, because, you know, I'm down on press conferences in general because I think they're so fake and and everything. But this one I'm not down on because you know what this is for longtime wrestling fans. We're going back to WrestleMania four. They did a show called the main event, and they would put it on Friday night in prime time. And that would be the WrestleMania angle for the main event. And it was Andre pinning Hogan, right? With the with the two referees. The one referee had plastic surgery to look like the other referee, even though they yeah, were the yeah. twin Hebners. And then the year after that was uh, the explosion of the mega powers. You know, because the Hulkster, he, he had lust in his eyes for Elizabeth. And that's what this is to me. This Thursday fake press conference, whatever you want to call it, it is where the angle, at least we expect, it is where the angle is going to happen. And they're in Las Vegas. The Super Bowl, as you can tell, my, my hat here, the Super Bowl is in Las Vegas. So there's going to be tons of media around anyway. Uh, I don't know if there's going to be like, someone from the athletic beat covering the WrestleMania press conference, but there will be people out there because there's just stuff going on. And it's just, I just think this is like fantastic marketing, like to take advantage of the Super Bowl in this way. And as uh, big Dave mentioned on wrestling Observer radio, it's not like you could have just said, Hey, you know, three days ago, uh, we want to book T-Mobile. Like they've had this thing booked probably for a long time. It's just fascinating. Like the whole thing is uh, is great marketing, I think. And you're a marketing guy. I know you realize that as well. But what what is your what are your thoughts on this Thursday presser that they're going to do? So I actually wanted to ask you, what do you think is going to happen? What I would hope is that we get some more storyline advancement so that they can officially announce the matches. That's what I hope. I like I'm very curious. I'm very curious how they how they maneuver this. I don't know what the answer to this is. I don't know what's going to make people happy. I th- I think the unfortunately, no matter what they announce, a lot of people are going to be left very unhappy because uh it's not going to be what they wanted. Either they wanted to see just Cody in a match or it's going to be a three-way or it's going to be Dwayne in the match and Cody announces something else or maybe maybe The Rock says, you know, hey, uh after I beat him I'm giving you my first title shot 
and it becomes a thing. I don't know. Maybe Cody turns. He joins the bloodline. <laughs> F you, Dwayne. There, there is more than one wrestling family. There is more than one wrestling family. I don't know. I, I'm, I, I like going into this with no expectations, uh, and it's, it's fun to cover wrestling like that. It is. I know that uh, our good friend, former co-host of this show, Denise Salcedo, is supposed to be there. I think she's heading out there. I think Sean is, is heading out there. Yeah, I think Sean is going out there. I'm not sure. I mean, this is just based on Twitter. Plans could possibly have changed, but that's what I heard. Uh, I wonder who else is going out there. You should be out there. Come on, you can make a quick trip to you know to what Vegas. I I could very easily justify that trip on Thursday to Vegas. Yeah, very easily I could justify it. It's it could be a business trip for you, right? Well, I just came back from L.A., so that West Coast. <laughs> Do you know it took me almost seven hours to get to L.A.? Really? It was the longest flight I I've ever taken out west. Is it because of weather? No, um, it was just a slower flight there. Uh, I don't know why. And when they went to land, there was a problem at LAX, and he had to go back. Like, he, he went down, and he went, nope, and he went right back up and went around for, like, 40 minutes. Oh, my God. Did, were people stuck. tripping out when, when you guys went back up in the air? Yeah, everybody's like, what the hell? And then, <laughs> and then he came on, he came on the, the thing. He's like, he's like, LAX doesn't know how to run their airport or whatever he said how about tell us that before you you uh go back up so we we don't think anything's going on yeah uh yeah. okay so i you know the i i think here's a, a scenario now this is all speculation on my point on my uh in my opinion here i think and you can already see this play out you see all of the websites covering this angle because Dwayne is involved right you, I think even like the Hollywood reporter and variety like they're all covering this like real news the fact that Dwayne yeah. is involved in this match and if you just have this press conference and you put Dwayne and Roman and Cody all together you're getting Roman Reigns and you're getting Cody Rhodes in all of these shots that are being covered by this mainstream media, where even if you if, if Rock wasn't there and you did something like this, you'd still get some of it, but I, but they're counting on his face being, you know, the 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 big driver to the attention, which is really smart, and you know they may they may think because this is this is about business they may think that that hardcore fan who thought that Cody was going to win at WrestleMania which we don't know for sure if he was they already they already pulled the football from us last year with the yeah. with the way that that match happened and you know who knows if they if they were what what really they were going to do but they may be okay with turning away some of the more hardcore fans if you could then bring in more casual fans. Now, I will I will tell you, you know, I have a casual friend group that, you know, every once in a while they'll tweet, they'll send us texts about wrestling. It's more about, you know, sports and stuff and just just things that we generally follow as like 40-year-old dudes. They were very interested in this entire rock thing. Like to them, you know, you know what the, you know what was the exciting thing of the story for them was that the rock he was using his stroke and he pulled his stroke on cody and he didn't care about cody and he's now a board member and he was using his power and cody was powerless here and just had to be a good employee like that's the story that they were really kind of hoping was true and leaning into because it's just chaos at that point but they're talking about it they're not going to be talking about cody and roman necessarily to me just in general they're talking to me because it's the rock so that's uh, that's a part of it, and I, you know, they're taking. I, they're I don't know how big of a risk this is. It's probably actually a, a small risk, but you know, the the only risk I see is that the fan base has been very happy with the product these last two years, and so you're kind of disrupting that a little bit. And I guess you're yeah. just hoping that you're bringing more eyeballs 
and you know you have more peak eyeballs this year too right because they they added a couple million people to um to the peacock network based on the football game so there's going to be more people and you're hoping that out of you know the almost three million people or two and a half or whatever it was you're hoping that you know some majority of them stayed on there's more eyeballs for wrestlemania maybe this is a driver of more peacock subs so uh the whole thing is fascinating this is not the last time we'll be talking about it. It's an evolving story, but like you said, it's fun. It's super like we're we're on it. We're it's great for us because we do a podcast that talks about wrestling. So fantastic stuff. Yeah, but uh, let me just say this. I know I know we're gonna m- move away. Um, here's the other side of this. Oh, there's a oh. Fox, Warner Brothers, Discovery, and Disney create new sports streaming venture. I just got this sent to me. Do you I, see this? I literally just got this too. <laughs> yeah, just got it. Wall Street Journal service will be available on ESPN Plus, Hulu, and Max subscribers. Fascinating. Okay, we'll we'll touch on it. I, I I'm I'm going to touch on this right. Okay. From all the people that I've spoken to about. This, you know, obviously The Rock showing up has brought all these people back want, being invested in wrestling again. Not one of these people that, that I know, you know, like casual fans, has has said to me, well, you know, it's, it's a shame Cody's not going to be in that main event. Everybody wants to see Dwayne. And that's how this company thinks. And, and, and we, we, we're going to see more of this. I'm telling you guys, Bad Bunny's going to be world champion. Mm. Uh, uh, Logan Paul's going to become world champion. You know, this is a Taylor Swift could win that women's title. This is going to be the new WWE. I'm I'm not saying today. I'm not saying tomorrow, but this is this is where this is headed. I, it's it's a good point. Uh, did you see who they added to the video game to the 2K video game? D- no, Muhammad who? Ali is a playable character as a wrestler in the 2K video Stop. game. Stop. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I want I want to wow. fight Muhammad Ali so I can put him in an airplane no. spin. That's what I Listen, want. Listen, guys, do I, I'm not. And again, I'm not. I'm not giving. I'm not giving you what I want to see. I'm saying what the goal of Endeavor will be. Has nothing to do with in ring wrestling. Yep. That those days are those days are done. <laughs> you know, it's about what's the most bang for your buck that you're going to get uh, in a main event, in press, covering. You know, for them to cover your company. We're seeing the shift. This it's the beginning. We're gonna see more of it. All right, let's talk some AEW here. We got a half an hour left. We right at the middle point. We have a show on Wednesday. Pretty large dynamite. We'll go over the 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 show in a second here, but there there's an announcement that Tony Khan is going to make, and most people believe it is something that you and I have been talking about on this show for quite a while. Some people are referencing your Twitter during the Grammys. You're tweeting about old rock groups. And are we to believe that this is having to do with one Mercedes Monet? I I know the answer. You want me to do we do we am I going to still pretend that it's not Mercedes? (laughs) Well, that's the setup, right? What 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 is like how confident? Are are we that this is what this is? I I would uh I would bet my house. Really? Yeah, I with would the bet new my house. Studio on it. and everything. With the new studio, you could have this Fakakta studio. I'm not I'm not a fan of it. These light <laughs> these lights gotta go. I gotta fix this whole place. No, I it's it's from day one when the the rumors started, I was told point blank that it was happening. Yes, uh, I I've spoken to you off air about how it's happening, and it's exactly happening the way that I that I was told it was going to happen. Listen, I I think it's fun to speculate, right? But you know, this is a big get for Tony. Tony is obviously very aggressively pushing the women's division in that company for for this year. That's one of the goals that they have. We're seeing that happen with Deanna signing. Mercedes is going there. You know, some people like like women's wrestling, and that's going to be great for them. And other people, they're not so much high up on the women's wrestling, and they don't care about it. And they're going to be detractors, and that's fine. 
But this is a monumental moment for this company. This is one of those missing pieces that they needed. You're trying to build a healthy brand that appeals to, to a lot, to more than just the guy that wants to see a Brian Danielson and, and Minoru Suzuki match, which is me. But you have to appeal to others also in order for growth. They announced Boston. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. Let's say they do. They announced Boston. They announced the TD Garden. Rumors. That's what the rumor is, right? Mercedes shows up in March. What do you do then? I don't know. But the this is the big time, gift for Tony. So the one time they did this was for Punk, and, and they still didn't even really announce anything, right? Like there, It wasn't like they announced CM Punk is going to be on Friday. Watch him debut on Rampage. The secrecy of it led us to believe that it was Punk, but we still had to watch just to make sure. Do you think they're going to do something similar with Mercedes or are they going to actually show her and announce her uh, on the television? Or is it going to be more secret sort of to lead you to watch whatever show it is like they uh, like they did with Punk? You know, I, I, I'm, I'm curious about that, too, because with Punk, the what drove that show to be sold out without an announcement was a speculation. It was the worst kept secret. Right. But. I think once you announce, you know, Boston and you kind of make a couple, uh, you allude that it's Mercedes, you know, you could figure out something, some way to do it. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know if they actually announced. I know that she filmed some stuff. She shot some stuff for them already. So I don't, I don't know. But I, listen, I, what, what will be a success, right? How do you measure that success? Is it going to be a sellout? Is it going to be 7,000 people in that building? Is it going to be a million viewers? Is it going to be 900,000? I, I think that's going to be a big question here. Yeah, my worry, and I don't think this is going to happen, but I think the risk is setting it up for failure a little bit. If it's not as big as maybe they are reading it to be, like, I, to me, I think you should make it as big as humanly possible. You have an opportunity to create a star and push her as, like, the top women's wrestler in, in the world, yeah. right? And I, so I would push it as big as humanly possible. But if you, you know, what if the attendance isn't fantastic? Um, what if the rating isn't fantastic? You, it, it, it's sort of a repeat of something. And usually when you do the repeat, it doesn't quite work as, as good. So I might even be a little bit more into like a, a second, a different creative idea just so that it's not a repeat. But you could also say, hey, like this worked the first time. Maybe it won't work as well, but it already worked. And our audience is kind of built for this kind of thing. So, uh, so yeah, so I, I'm intrigued. I, I would like to see how they do this and, to me, I think she is a uh, she's she's a she is somebody who you can create around, but she's also a pretty independent person who believes in her value. So that that could be interesting as well. Listen, uh, I think a lot of people want second chances, and I think this may be a great opportunity for her to kind of show. Listen, I'm not just a WWE performer. I could do so much more. I am, a, I am a wrestler's wrestler. And I think that's something that she wants to kind of prove also. We're seeing that. I mean, she's been training with Hoovy. She's been training with different people, obviously, before her injury. But she, she is a world-class wrestler. She's, a, she's right up there. She's one of the most, uh, you know, if you're talking about WWE women's wrestling, one of the most important pieces to that puzzle that they had over the last decade. And now it's a question of, okay, now you're an established star. You've established your abilities. Can you do this again somewhere else? And I think Tony believes that she can, and a lot of people believe that she can. I hope she does. I hope this is tremendous for them. This is only a positive for wrestling. Yes, I agree. Uh, before we talk more about AEW, I wanted to read from – somebody did send me the article that you were talking about – the Fox, ESPN, and Warner Brothers Discovery app. It's a joint streaming platform to share sports assets 
The service will be available on ESPN Plus, Hulu, and Max. Uh, each company will own one third of the product. So that one third would be one third Fox, one third Max, one third Disney, according to people familiar with the matter. And it is expected to launch later this year. So people who are predicting the rebundling, it is coming. It is definitely coming. And uh, so, if, I mean, you almost don't even need to have, you know, if, you, if you're worried only about sports, you don't need to have all three of those subs. You only Maybe you only need one yeah. if you're only a sports fan. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. Even though I do have uh, I do have all three myself, but that's because I'm a stickler for just having everything. But, yeah, that's a very interesting uh, interesting bundle there for sports fans. We also have a couple Super Chats. I don't know if you saw. Oh, it. go for it. Uh, yeah, 472, 499 says the Rock Roman match was anticipated for years before even Cody was in the company. Hate how the poor, ha hate how the poor execution has stained the hype and build for this. I think they just, I don't know what they could have done. <laughs> so I better. actually, I, I want this stuff to play out before I consider whether the execution was poor or not, because we also don't know what they were trying to do yet. And, and maybe we'll know completely yeah. by Thursday. Well, Thursday. So the yeah. the execution is manipulative is what it is. And so it is yeah. designed to draw passion and emotions out of fans like that's that's what it's built there to do you know in a time and day when it's supposed to be a lot harder to uh work the hardcores right they they did a pretty good job of that so uh yeah i i would like to wait to see this out in full before i decide whether or not it uh it wasn't a good idea or it wasn't a good ha process so far poncho with 499 asks how much input or influence do you think roman has in this I'd assume he'd, he'd prefer to face The Rock and pass Hogan's uh, and and passing Hogan before dropping to Cody. I I don't, you know, these guys are pros. They'll do whatever they think is is the best decision. But I do know that they both really want to wrestle each other. So if there's an opportunity for you to wrestle The Rock and he's your cousin, and he's the biggest movie star in the world, <laughs> why would you not take that opportunity? Yeah, especially because Cody Cody is always going to be there, right? Yeah, at least you would yeah. think that that match is always going to be there. That one on one match, you can always do it. What if instead of fighting for this undisputed championship, what if The Rock gets a new championship created called the BMF Championship? Like, no, nah, he did that in UFC already. Well, he did that already. He did that already. <laughs> yeah, he did that already. The the uh, the Under Armour Championship. With uh, with his logo on it, no, uh, it, it you know the 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 whole thing about Roman. I'm sure out of you know, I, I think I think the idea is he would have some say for sure. But I mean, is he? He probably doesn't even. You, you remember back in the day, the story of uh, Randy Savage becoming the world champion was because he honky tonk man said that he wasn't going to lose his intercontinental championship. And yeah. so instead they moved Randy to the heavyweight title. Like that's like, I think that's Dave's what Dave has said for years. Like that is someone just outright like looking out for themselves and, and not wanting to do business. Now we don't know the particulars from honky side. I haven't heard his story, but in this situation, like why would Roman not want to do business? Because Every time he does business, his his character and his storyline become stronger. So I'm sure there's a lot of trust in what the company and what creatively they're doing. And it they, they're they're yeah. gonna make it worth his while. The dude barely ever has to wrestle. Why would he put his foot down on certain things? You know, you pick your battles and they take care of you. And that's kind of how it seems to be working to me. Here's another one. Oh, we got a bunch actually. Do you want me to continue with these? Yes, yeah, keep going. We can we'll talk about dynamite Hold at the on. end. Yeah, hold on. Let's uh okay. Uh Bucks Basement, four ninety nine. Rock and Roman is a match in just name. Rock looked gassed. 
He's not delivering a maniac. Cast in what match. way? There's there's two versions yeah, of Cast. There's two, and he's looked <laughs> and he looked both. <laughs> Uh, you don't want to know what Philly will will do to the Rock. I think they'll uh, listen. He's not going to put on a five star 24, 2024 level match. That's not what he does. But you know what? The same thing was said about Rock and Hogan. It was a yes. smoke and mirrors match, and everybody left there really happy. Uh, Steve Austin and uh, you know, uh, and, and uh, wrestled two years ago, three or whatever it was. And it was a smoke and mirrors match. And I'm sure they'll do the same exact thing. The Rock doesn't have to do anything except a, an eyebrow, an elbow, a rock bottom, a false finish rock bottom, a kip up. And that's it. The crowd is going to eat it up. Because it's the last time you'll probably see him do that. And he's the biggest star in the world. Whether or not they boo him, it doesn't matter. I think at the end of the day, the story, I, I, I find it difficult to believe that that match is going to be a travesty, a disaster of a main event. I think it's going to be fine. I just don't think it's going to be, you know, a uh, a five star classic. Maybe adding Gable Cody to five stars, adding Cody to that match actually makes it better if you think about it. If that was the plan, because it's all smoke and mirrors. If you yeah. add Cody, the act, the work rate, the the actual wrestling, and then you can do stuff where you know Dwayne hangs out on the on the side and under the ring for ten minutes at a time if if they want. But yeah. the other thing about this, and and what in using your Hogan and Rock comparison, the Rock leaned into being a heel in that match. Mm -hmm. He didn't pout. He didn't go, "Oh man, why are they booing me?" He leaned into it because he understands how pro wrestling works first and foremost. So you know, because there's a lot of questions about people saying, "Oh, you know, did he come back to be a heel?" Like. I mean, does he have to? Does he have to be the smiley baby face all the time? I mean, you know, some people will treat him as a baby face no matter what, and some people will treat him as a heel no matter what, just because he's old and, you know, quote taking somebody's spot. That's just how wrestling fans react. So that is um, that is the other part of it where he may not even care if he gets booed. He may think that that's fantastic and just lean into it because Hollywood Rock was like some of the greatest work he ever did. If you go back to that time frame, that was like one of the best characters he ever had was Hollywood Rock. I think he's one of the most important professional wrestling characters ever developed. I uh, and for multitude of reasons. One, the avenue he's he's created. You know, he paved the road for a wrestler to become a major movie star. It was attempted multiple times. It never happened. It was almost impossible because that stigma existed. You were a wrestler. You weren't a movie star. So. He, you know, he broke that 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 glass ceiling for a lot of talent. John Cena's uh, had a successful Hollywood career. Obviously, there's there's a couple of uh, Mercedes, which this goes into a question, another question that we have. by trust the process. Thirty four, four ninety nine. I pop every time he mentioned that username. By the way, yeah, it's, it's, he's Dave. awesome. He's like yeah, such I a always great pop. It chatter. doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's like eight in the morning and I'm taking my shower and I hear trust the process asks and I'm like, oh, there he is. Um, here's a question for Andrew. Do you know or suspect Mercedes deal will be a combo deal with AEW or WBD for films and acting roles? Uh, I have not heard a thing about it being uh, a combo deal with acting. I know that she very much enjoys it uh, as far as the acting side goes, but I don't know. Um, I, I haven't heard a thing about that. That. Like we we've, we've never seen that, right? Like I know that whenever you think about these companies working with WWE or AEW, like okay, like now do they do anything outside? Like in in some instances, them working outside of the wrestling company could make them a bigger star. But then, do you want them away for long? Like there's other parts of that, but that could be attractive yeah. for a wrestler. It's like oh. I will pick WWE over AEW or vice versa based on other things that are involved that I, I could be freed up to do. And maybe she couldn't do a lot of the stuff she wants to do in WWE that she may want to do in AEW. Who knows? We'll, yeah. we'll have to, we'll have to see what, what goes on there. Yeah. All right. That was it. That's all I had. All right. Pretty big dynamite coming up on Wednesday. Where are you with uh, 
we haven't talked in a couple of weeks. Where are you with current AEW television? Are you, do you like it? Um, yeah, I always or, like or, it. I think that they've been better. I, I think it's been a better product. They've gone to basics again. You know, the back to basics approach has helped them out a lot. Uh, I love these wacko matches that we get randomly. Like people are complaining about Minoru Suzuki and, uh, and Edge and Adam. I thought that was fantastic to see. You'll never see that again. <laughs> you will never see that again. Yes. And, and, you know, I, I, same thing, you know, uh, uh, the last weekend, uh, Danielson and, um, uh, oh, God. Hetch, Hetch, uh, uh, is it Hetchacero? Hetchacero. 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 Sorry, guys. I'm butchering it. I speak many languages. Spanish is not one of them, unfortunately <laughs> for me. I speak all the useless languages that nobody uses. Uh, I, I thought that was awesome to see. Because it's a bizarre match. I, you know, for me, I'm into it. I, I think they've been doing a much better job. I think the Swerve story's been good. Uh, the uh, Sting, obviously, is the big story here. They have a lot of injuries uh, that they got to they gotta make up for, and they're doing their best here. And I think, you know, the second half of this year is going to be very telling for this company. Uh, I, I know some things that are in motion here that I think are going to be positives to their TV. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I've been fine with it. And even Collision, you know, the, the attend, but unfortunately for them, the optics matter and the perception matters. And the perception right now for them is who the hell cares how good your matches are? Mm -hmm. What's your TV rating and what's your attendance? When you have, I mean, they had a better, I think it was like over 3,000 this week for Collision, but they got to be higher than that. I, I, I know that, you know, I've heard Dave say like, well, you know, in the history of wrestling, you know, 4,000, 5,000 is a good crowd. Yes, absolutely. But they're not at 4,000, 5,000. They're, they're, they're sitting in the 2,000s for some of these shows. Very vocal crowds. They love doing it. But in order to be competitive with perception, you have to have those buildings full. I think they have a different battle there. I don't find a problem with their TV. My problem is their marketing. Yeah. That's where, I mean, that's where I'm looking. I'm like, you know, these are the improvements you can make. Um, but you know what they have done? They have stopped shining the light on the crowd. Have you noticed that? Mm -mm. They're back to, you know, hitting the spot, like the, the color lights on the crowd, like they used to before they flipped everything over, where they wanted to see all, everybody in the building. I don't want to see anybody in the building. I don't want to see your wacky signs. <laughs> I like I like that the building is full, but I like the light on the crowd. Yeah. Um, I I think you know right now it's a transition year, and they're they're they realize what their problems are. I'll tell you that it's not that you know Tony's not inept. This is not an inept company. Uh, listen, man, they did something tremendous. Brian Keith, love that guy. Is they signed him. I don't know. Is he? <laughs> <laughs> I I like. I mean, I don't know too much about him. I know uh, that he was like one of the folks who, on Twitter, people would kind of go crazy for whenever there was like an independent show, and so that's kind of how I knew about him. And then when he was on, showed up on AEW TV, I was like, oh wow, this guy's unique. He's different, different character. And then he never won a match. And then I was like, well. These rankings sure don't matter when it comes to payroll because then they signed them anyways. But um, uh, good for him. What you, I'm, what I'm happy thinking? of it. Uh, I haven't gotten your thoughts of the shows the last month. I think they've been okay. I've, I've enjoyed them. I think the product is a little sleepy right now. Some of that is because WWE is kind of hitting on all cylinders and taking yeah. a lot of the attention away. And sometimes, you know, some of this was the, the competition. You know, especially with the NFL playoffs, I was trying to figure out how to watch Collision. And what happened is that I think I missed two in a row. And then last week, I was like, okay, there's no real competition from that national standpoint. And so maybe I'll catch back up with Collision. But I kind of already had missed two in a row. And I didn't feel like missing Collision really was you know, really hurt me as a viewer of AEW product. Like yeah. Dynamite still was sort of meant the same. And so last week, uh, I got really behind in uh, following the Warriors too. And so I actually watched two Warriors games like a day late. 
And that was like the competition for my eyeballs for collision was like, oh, I got to watch these two Warriors games. And I had to bump collision. So I missed like three collisions in a row. Now, there may be a point where, you know, they they dial that show back up. But I sort of feel like it is dynamite light for the hardcores, the hardcore of the hardcores, maybe even. And you're going to get unique matches, like you said. You're going to get a lot of Eddie Kingston and Brian Danielson. That's awesome. But nothing happens on that show. Like, it's not like this Mercedes announcement happens on Collision. No, it happens on Dynamite. That's the A of show. Course, That's yeah. the one that I have to pay attention to. And yeah. if I have time, then I'll watch Collision. And then if I have nothing going on, then I'll also be able to watch Rampage. But that is that is less and less the case for I, me, is that I just, I, I, just, I just run out of time with stuff. And, and I, now I've missed I tend it. to watch... I tend to watch Collision live on Saturday because I don't go out on Saturdays. I don't, I, I'm, I'm home generally on Saturdays. So 8 o'clock comes, I put it on. I have a couple cocktails. I'm, I'm, I'm nice and loose, so I'm enjoying the show. Yeah. I, but that, that night is a nightmare for them. That is not a good night for them. And I'm very curious what they do if SmackDown were to move from Fridays. What do you do then? I would say... You get the hell out of Saturday, and now you put your put your show on a legacy time slot. Hmm. I I I think a lot of these 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 issues with Collision, we're gonna have an answer. Obviously, if they if you know SmackDown moves to another night, uh, what do you do? I know that SmackDown does not like being on Fridays. WWE never liked them being on Friday because it's a logistical nightmare, especially during like a WrestleMania weekend. Yeah, when yeah. you lose out on certain things that you could do. Um, you know, you could do something different. I don't, I, I it, it, there's a lot of moving parts this year, a ton of moving parts. Listen, an AEW may not be for everybody. If you're looking for good, you know, a certain type of wrestling, uh, it's for you. If you're looking for the stories of WWE and, and the, the brightness of that show, the WWE is for you. That's fine. You could be at number two. You could be a distant number two. That doesn't mean that you're failing. I, I think this is going to be a very interesting year. It's going to be a pivotal year for the company depending on the TV rights and everything else that they're doing. Okay, so Dynamite. We have uh, Tony Khan's big announcement, which we spent a lot of time talking about. And this is in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, by the way. Uh, do you know what the ticket sales are like for this one? Because, I mean, it's a pretty giant Dynamite for them. I could find it. I, it wasn't bad, actually. It was actually it was better than I thought it's been. So I'll, I'll pull it up while you uh, run down the card. Okay, so we have a women's world title eliminator. Tony Storm versus Red Velvet with Deanna Perrazzo on commentary. This is a match that is very predictable. I find Red Velvet to be super athletic, and you know, I think she's got a lot of promise, but I don't imagine, you know, this the this will be competitive. I don't imagine she's winning this one though. We have John Moxley, Brian Danielson, and Claudio Castagnoli against Mistico, Volador Jr., and Hechicero. What do you think about Moxley possibly showing up in CMLL? CMLL. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, it's, it's almost embarrassing for me. I am not as familiar with CMLL as I should be. Uh, I, I went down a deep rabbit hole like a decade ago, but it's really yeah. been something I, I, I haven't really watched too much of. Um, I, I find the the integration interesting for them. The, tremendous talents. I don't know if it means anything to anybody. Uh, I, I guess John Moxley wrestling in, in CMLL is going to be fascinating to see. <laughs> but, you know, these are bucket list items for these guys, you know, yeah. and Tony's giving it to them. And yeah. that's fine. I think that's okay, you know, to use it. By the way, the ticket sales here, uh, they're going to be over 5,000 by tomorrow. And that, but that's an NBA arena, so they probably seat like 17,000 for basketball. Yeah, they scaled it to 5,200. Okay. So they'll be at 5,000. They're 4,600 as of yesterday. So they probably, they were moving, they moved 130 tickets uh, a day ago. The last time they were there, by the way, Last February, they had 7,000 in the building. Mm. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. By the way, the Forbidden Door this year. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
if Okada is going to be in the U.S. Yeah. And Will Ospreay is going to be in the U.S. Is New Japan the only partner for the Forbidden Door show? Because do they have talent that AEW fans are desperate to see on a pay-per-view? Um, Naito? Naito. Uh... You're already getting Moxley and Naito in April. Which could be could have been a forbidden door match. Maybe maybe that maybe there's a follow up to that. But I, I just started thinking about this. Like New Japan is going through their own transition, and the forbidden door show in of itself was kind of a draw because of these dream matches. And you know, there's some great young talent in New Japan. I mean, I, and AEW's audience is generally smart enough to know who those guys are. So that may be a little bit of a draw. But I do wonder if it's if the forbidden door is going to be like new japan and you know and other places where you can find folks i I just don't yeah, i just I, wonder I, about that whole thing i think it's more the wacky matches that you won't see regularly than anything else i mean they do a forbidden door match every week now you know you're mm -hmm. getting these but i think cmll being inter integrated is going to be telling i have a forbidden door story that i'm waiting i will i will announce it in a month all right I think people I have are something waiting on Forbidden Door. I have something. People keep asking uh, pretty... me about that one. What? What are they asking you? They're just asking about. Look, the mo basically the question is: Is Forbidden Door at Madison Square Garden? That's the question that I get. Oh, do you want me? I'll answer that right now. Go ahead. You want that answer? You, uh, I need a drum roll, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> So that will stop that will stop that specific question from coming. To you. Yes, please. <laughs> okay, let's finish up the card here for Wednesday. Chris Jericho against Takeshita. Chris Jericho is uh he's still beating folks that I kind of wonder if he should be beating at this point. And I sort of feel like he's beaten Takeshita, and I sort of feel like maybe he shouldn't beat Takeshita on this show. Um I don't think he should beat him. No. And, and I think, I, I, you know, you, I don't think they've done good by him, by the way, by Takeshita. I, I, I think they have missed a couple key opportunities here with him. Uh, there's something very impressive. You look at him, and you're like, you know, there's something there. Omega injury probably is at least part of the reason, right? Because that you know, mega inju were... injury for sure, yeah, yeah. But they waited, like they waited a little bit. They were doing that Don Callis thing. They filmed it. They decided not to use it. Um, I, I, but now with Okada coming, I mean, or or not, I don't know. Let me let me backtrack. I don't know about Okada. I don't know what his deal is right now. But um, he's a tremendous, tremendous performer, Takeshita, mm -hmm. and. You know, you 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 have some very unique opportunities with him, but they just got to go forward. They yeah. just got, and he can't lose. He can't keep losing. I, has he lost? Who's he lost to? Uh, Takeshita. Yeah, I don't think he's lost. Has he? Well, early I, on he was losing when he when he when he showed right, up. Right, 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 right. Yeah, D -d -d recently, I guess. Yeah, he 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 Listen, was he's losing young a too. Lot. He yeah, he's a young man. He's 28 years old. You know, they got they got they got a couple of years with him. And you know, I, I feel there's a lot of stop and go also there. There's a lot of stop and go because there's so much talent that you're trying to present uh properly. Uh I I hope he beats Chris Jericho and they kind of create this momentum with him. Yeah, me too. All right. Big Bill and Ricky Starks defend their titles against Sting and Darby Allen. I am crossing my fingers that nothing happens to Sting. He gets out of this match completely healthy because he's got the big one coming on the pay-per-view. Uh, I'm assuming tag title change or something to that effect on this match. What if it's like a flare low blow? <laughs> a flare low blow? Yeah, on Flair Sting? shows up and he screws Sting once again. Oh man, um, that was... I yeah, put the titles on them. Mine is, why not? Yeah, I hope so. I, I want to see that to story. The Bucks? No, I want to see him win. They got to beat the Bucks. Oh, these... Sting's Sting's got to go. Sting's got to retire the hero. 
Flair's going to screw him for the 80th time. <laughs> yeah, these are the dumb baby face. I don't like dumb baby faces. The dumbest All baby's right. face. The dumbest, yeah. And then the main event uh, of this show for the winner gets the next title shot at Revolution. Swerve against Hangman. I still don't think that this is uh, this is fair. Swerve won two times. Why does Hangman even get a chance? But they're doing this match, and it's not two out of three matches. It's just one match. They could still do a three-way, I'm assuming, at Revolution. But uh, who do you think wins this one? Uh, I don't know. Um, I know the focus is on Swerve, obviously, and it should be. Um. I don't know who wins it, but here's the other thing. Do you take the title off of Joe already? Or do you let him hang on to that till double or nothing? Or, you know. Uh, are they are they another... doing an April pay-per-view? I, 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 I don't, I may, I, 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 sorry, my mic's breaking. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, if they, if they, if they do an I, April I, I will say this, I will say this. Uh. I have heard things that possibly, but I have no, I, I have not been able to double verify or yeah. whatever. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. if they do an April, I, I'm, I'm going to backtrack a little. I know that the goal was to add more pay-per-views to the schedule. Mm -hmm. I was told there will be 12 pay-per-views in 2024, but that's with counting Ring of Honor because Ring of Honor is canon to that Ooh. company. So if they add another pay-per-view, what month could it be? Obviously, yeah. it's not in February. We already have the March pay-per-view. So do you do something yep. in April? I we'll find out. Uh, I'll. I think that'll be something interesting. But basically, I, I was saying, if Thanks, they Garrett. do have an <laughs> April, <laughs> if they do have an April pay-per-view, you could have Joe win and and keep the title but i think if you get, if you get all the way till the uh double or nothing then you're half of the year and you have so many big matches with some of these guys that you want to do and then you're kind of running out of time a little bit for that calendar year because I mean, the, the way that we have to think about this is much like wrestlemania everything is going to be built up for all in like that's their big show of the year so you want all of your stuff yeah kind of figured out for all in and uh and yeah i mean but i you know joe's doing a tremendous job so i would love to see joe yeah no joe's champ. he's awesome joe's a great champion uh i i'm really enjoying this role of his but you know you need you need to solidify your next guy you need to figure out what's happening with max when he's coming back you got to figure out when kenny's coming back you know there's so many of these and then who else do you bring in osprey's coming you know, in who would, soon osprey too yeah uh maybe okada Right, may possibly Okada's coming in, um, and then there's you know Drew hasn't signed his contract yet, so I know that that would be a tremendous get for them if there was anybody available. You know, maybe they can make that play for Brock Lesnar now. No, I think that's a terrible oh, God. idea. That's a terrible idea. <laughs> oh man, yeah, you know what's a wild? One. A couple months ago, I know we got to wrap it up, but do you remember before the holidays we were talking about this and? I asked you or you asked me, you said, well, who's who's that next guy? Like, who's mm -hmm. available? Like, yep. who's they did the CM Punk thing? Obviously, they got Chris Jericho. I'm saying name recognition. Who would be somebody that would stop people? You know, I think we were talking about Goldberg then. Like, well, does Tony yeah. want to get Goldberg in to do something? Is there anybody left for, for them to get? That's that's a reality. You know, that's that's a real person, possibly. I guess it depends what you think about Drew, right? It depends what you think about Drew, yeah. To me, he's like the best guy going right now. But he he also seems to have a little bit of freedom. He he seems a yeah. he seems a little loose. New like freedom. Personality is really coming out. I love this character. Isn't that, that, wild? that Isn't that great? One. Yeah. Is it I mean awesome. his entire I, I watched it twice. I watched that opening promo twice today. Uh mm -hmm. I thought it was, I mean, every week that he's been coming out, he's been a home run, right? But he's, it's a whole different guy. Like, he's not a heel. He's not a face. He's, he's just being honest. Yeah. About how he feels. 
you know, when he told CM Punk that he was praying for this moment and his prayers were answered, <laughs> it was holy moly. The like, line, that's the line of the year. What a line of the year. Um, that was fantastic. I mean, the whole segment with Seth and Cody, he was great. He's just so relaxed. He's not re I mean, you could tell that these are his thoughts and his words, right? Uh, or he's become a tremendous actor over the last, I don't know, six weeks. Yeah. But tremendous to see this version of him. Uh, right. You know, what, what could it do for AEW? I don't know. But he's in a really good spot right now to get whatever he wants with all the injuries in WWE. Yes, absolutely. All right, we did go a little bit extra because we 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 were gone for a couple of weeks. Next week, um, I may not be able to do this show on Tuesday. That is still in flux, and we will try and find a time to do it if I cannot. So just uh, follow us on yeah. Twitter if you want to find well, out. Maybe we or... could do like a Friday thing too, Garrett. What if we did like a like a Friday show? The problem is. Is I have to do that show with Dave on Friday. Ah, That's Dave who? Dave Schmave. <laughs> or or may, maybe I'll just talk Dave into bringing you on to Wrestling Observer oh. Radio. But we do record Ooh, you like know? at we do record at like two thirty ish my time, which would be dinner time for you. So I don't know. You'd have to five thirty. Yeah, you'd have to talk to the wife about that one. Okay. No, I think you know what if if I'm if I'm home on Friday. Uh, I would, that would be my first appearance on wrestling observer, observer radio. Yeah. I'll talk to Dave about it and see, and just let him know that. Yeah. You know, we weren't able to do we're live pal. So it'd be interesting to bring Andrew on. So, um, Dave and I've been texting. We te we're text buddies now. <laughs> wait, but we have found, you gotten I love those? Wait, have you gotten the, uh, accidental, uh, like he records himself and sends you the file because uh, he like sat on his phone or something. Um, do I have to play it for you before we wrap it up? <laughs> Is it just a bunch of typing okay. and just slamming the keyboard? I so this was at okay, this December 29th, oh my 2023 gosh. at 8 p.m. on the dot. I get a call. I'm in my tub, okay? <laughs> I'm a little lit. I took I took a little edible. I'm hanging out in my tub. It's eight o'clock. I get a call and it says DM. Dave Meltzer. And I go, oh, my God, I don't know what to do. I can't answer this <laughs> right now. I'm sure he's going to ask me something really important. It was probably about uh, – he was probably calling me about uh, the pay-per-view, World's End, that I was going yeah. to. Yeah. Because I had asked him. I said, is there anything you want me to ask? Um, which Corey was there, and Corey did, did ask some tremendous questions. Yeah. And, um, and I, I missed the call. However, I did get this. One minute and 32 seconds of Dave just typing. <laughs> and I will, if I can get it to play. Yes, we can hear it. <laughs> oh, there's his, there's his email. I will save this. I will cherish that email, that, that voice message for the rest of my life. <laughs> uh, all right. The best. So, the best. So the make sure you time. follow. Make sure you follow Andrew on Twitter. Uh, make sure you follow uh, at WLPF4W for us, and we'll get some word out about next week's show just in case I do have to go to the office on Tuesday and we hey, can't do it. one more super time. chat. One yeah. more super okay, chat. I don't want to leave it. anybody hanging. Lone yep. Wolf. Another another regular name here. What is Seamus' contract status? Could he jump? I That's don't see question. him going anywhere. Yeah, I don't see him going anywhere. Yeah, he does seem like a lifer, though... If he feels like he's in the middle on WWE, it would be about how Tony views him, right? It would be how Tony views him, yeah. But he did have a fantastic, what was it, 2022. Oh. Dude, we, there's so many more. Um, we missed a bunch. Okay, keep keep it going. Keep it okay. rolling. I'll do we'll, fire. We'll yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do really quick. Fire I, I want to get to this. Sorry, guys. Uh, Ali, Ali Khan says who will have better cardio sting or the rock i'm gonna go with sting you think so yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna go with rock because if he's doing this for real he's going to train harder for it um and and he's younger than sting the reason why sting is probably not doing five miles on the treadmills because he's in his mid-60s 
and his knees are probably terrible. So I'm going to go rock, but it's probably closer than than I would think. And uh, Gravity Guy said, uh, is there any news on Okada? I don't have any news on Okada. It seems like the news on Okada just went to like a standstill. Yeah. Right. Like like he whatever he just shut everything down. He's like, I'm just going to finish out this. I got to finish these matches and then whatever, which is great for him because, you know, he, he's keeping that a mystery. Yeah. That's it. We're done. <laughs> All right. There you go. All right. For Andrew. Thank you to producer John. I am double G. Thank you, thank we you. will see you when we see you. Peace out.